smoky fire in the hole. Let's cook some fish. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome once again to my backyard. What I got going on for you today is I've got some fish. This is codfish that I've cut into chunks. Bacala, if you're Italian, this is a bacala. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna cook this up in the wok, in the Weber barbecue wok, it's gonna be great. So I think I got all my ducks in a row. Let me get started here with a little bit of toasted sesame oil. We're just gonna lightly douse some of this on the fish. Hey, I, I wanna tell you, I got this recipe from a guy named Jamie who runs a YouTube channel called Spice and Pans. And I'll put a link in the description to Jamie's channel. Uh, he's a real cool dude. He's got a lot of great recipes, a lot of great uh, Oriental style recipes because he is himself Oriental. And he didn't use uh, sesame oil. He used ginger, ginger juice. But I don't have any ginger juice, so I'm substituting sesame oil. And the next thing I got to get is some uh, cornstarch on the fish. Got a box of cornstarch here. I need to put a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. You only call for like one heaping tablespoon of cornstarch. You got to get that coated on the fish. Get the fish coated up with the cornstarch. Because when we fry this, that cornstarch is going to go towards making the sauce for the fish. You don't want to handle the fish too much because it'll break up. Bacala is a pretty nice white solid white fish but you don't want to uh, mess with it too much or it'll break up break up in the pan so like I said I think I got all my ducks in a row let me get the wok hot and we'll get it cooking so stay tuned the Weber barbecue wok is at about 300 degrees which isn't screaming hot but it's pretty hot first thing we're gonna do is throw in some Sang stir-fry oil that was a surprise huh you didn't see that coming why would I put stir-fry oil in a stir-fry? And especially of all brands that I could possibly have, there's nothing like a new bottle of Sang's because it comes out of the bottle real slow, like that. Takes forever. I should have took that little restrictor out of there because I knew I was making a video and I knew you didn't want to watch me trying to pour oil for two and a half hours. So anyway, I think I finally got enough oil in the pan. And there we go, okay. Got our sangs in there. First thing we're gonna do is throw in a finely diced onion. Just a, a regular old white onion that we're gonna stir fry up. Stir fry up our little, a very small white onion. Just get that cooked up a little bit. I think we can do this in real time because, you know, this goes pretty quick once you get started, once you get going. Okay, got our onion going. Next we got some ginger, about an inch of ginger that I diced up small. Nothing like ginger. Ginger is so beautiful and aromatic. That onion's aromatic too, but let me tell you what, the ginger is too. Get our ginger cooking. I should probably fast forward through this because it's not cooking as quickly as I thought it would. Okay, the onion and ginger are done. The, the uh, onion is translucent. Boy, does this smell good. Next thing we're going in with some garlic. About a tablespoon of minced, finely minced garlic in there. Oh boy, does that sound, that smells unreal. Let me tell you what, and all I've done is put some garlic and ginger and onions in a pan and it smells great. It's so aromatic and beautiful. Speaking of aromatics, we've got some uh, spring onion, just the white part of the spring onion that we're gonna fry up next. Just gonna get them fried up a little bit. Get them going. Our aromatic vegetables have cooked up. They smell wonderful. So now we're gonna put the kicker. This is the kicker of this recipe. This is Lee Kum Ki black bean and garlic sauce and this is the only uh the only like flavoring that we're going to put in this dish we're going to put about a heaping tablespoon of this lee kum ki black bean garlic sauce in there and uh there's no soy sauce in this recipe which is kind of weird 
which I thought was kind of weird. They usually put, you know, almost every oriental recipe has soy sauce in, but not this one. All we've got is that Lee Kum Kee black bean garlic sauce. We're just going to stir fry that up a little bit, just for a little minute. Going to get it cooked up like that. Get it all back down to the bottom of the wok. Now I got to do something that might be a little dangerous because I have to pour in some water. And I've got all that hot oil, so I have to be careful. We need about a cup of water in there. I'm going to pour it in from the side here. Get about a cup of water in that wok. We want it hot because we want it to steam that fish. Get it in there. That's about a cup of water right there. I'm going to stir that up. It's boiling in the middle there. You see it's made that beautiful sauce. And when we put the fish in, the fish has got that uh, cornstarch all over it. And that cornstarch is going to thicken that sauce. So we're going to throw in the fish a little at a time. Here we go. Water's not quite boiling at this point, but it will be. There we go. It's getting there. Drop in our fish, our codfish, our bacala. Bacala. Good stuff, let me tell you what. And don't forget it's coated in cornstarch, which is going to cause that uh, black bean paste, black bean sauce, and the water to make a kind of a sauce for the fish. You get that in there. That's the fish. You want to carefully stir that because you don't want to break that fish up. And we want to cook it until it becomes kind of translucent. You see how it's looking right now? It's starting to look really good. It doesn't take long to cook fish. Let me tell you what. That's beautiful. And I didn't show you, but I put a little bit of uh, salt and pepper in there too. Oh, look how beautiful that sauce is. That sauce is getting thick and nice. We're going to cook that up a little bit. Let that cook a minute, just till the fish gets done. And then uh, we'll finish this off. The fish is beautifully cooked through in that black bean sauce. Now what we're going to do is put the rest of the uh, spring onion, the green part that we didn't use earlier, that in there. And then I've got some red pepper. Now this is red sweet pepper. The recipe calls for hot pepper, but if I put hot pepper in this, my family will murder me in my sleep. And since I'm not ready to die yet, whether I die from them killing me or from, you know, COVID-19 kills me, one or the other, I don't really care, but I'm not ready to die. So I didn't put hot pepper in this. If you want to make it the way Jamie made it at Spice and Pans, you're going to want to put some hot pepper in yours. Isn't that beautiful? That is so pretty. I thought it was, you know, I had to put the red in there because the red and the green, you know, it's kind of a complimentary looking thing. That's my, uh, that's it. That stuff is done. I'm going to get that off the fire and plate it up on some rice and get a beer. My mouth is watering. Going to get a beer and take a taste as soon as those uh, spring onions get a little cook on them and those peppers just need to cook a little bit. Don't want them to cook too much. And they're in that black bean sauce. That stuff is amazing. My fish is done. There's the Frosty Root Boy mug star of the show. And here's today's beer. This is Lost Coast Hazy IPA from the Lost Coast Brewery. This is the Graveyard Series. I love it. That goes perfectly with that COVID-19 we're dealing with. Let's get the top off of that and pour that. I love a hazy IPA and Lost Coast is one of my favorite breweries. Let's pour that. Let's tilt that glass, baby, and pour that IPA out. Oh, man, this is going to be... You know, I should have got some Kirin or something like that to go with my... Uh, to go with my Oriental style dish, but I didn't. I got this Lost Coast Hazy IPA. And I'm not sorry, because I like it. It's beautiful. A beautiful hazy IPA. Where's my drinking buddy, Rob? Let's sniff the sniff off it, Rob. 
Oh man, that smells good. Let me tell you what. It smells great. Rob, where's your dog at, Rob? Does the dog drink beer? Does the dog eat fish? I don't know. We used to have a dog that would eat pizza crust. I used to have to fight him for the pizza crust. But I don't know if they eat fish or not. Hey, let's quaff the froth off it, Rob. Stay tuned. Wow, that's amazing. That's a hell of a good beer. Let me get some of my fish over here in that black bean sauce, that beautiful codfish with all those veggies and stuff. Get that in my mouth. Mmm. My goodness. That is delicious. I got some white rice. That sauce is amazing. Mmm. Oh boy. It would have been better. With, I forgot to show you. Right at the end, you splash a little bit of Shaoxing cooking wine in the wok. Anyway, some hot peppers would have made it better. But like I said, I don't want to get murdered in my sleep. So we skipped the hot peppers today. There's my uh, fish. Wok. I'm sorry, talk with my mouthful. Wok cooked fish just for you. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, go up in the iCard and check out Jamie at Spice and Pans. Oh, that's delicious. I can't stop eating it. And uh, he's got lots of great recipes. I'll probably be copycatting some more of his. Mm. Next time, Sorry, talking about my mouthful. Next time I'll get a, a Kieran Ikebon or some beer like that when I make something oriental. Anyway, babies, you know what I always say. If you like this crap, please subscribe. If you don't, go up in the iCards. I'll have two of them up there. One for the barbecue pit dog, my drinking buddy. And one for uh, spice and pans, where I got the recipe. And next week, come back next week. We'll be bringing you more amazing recipes. Oh, and stay tuned to the end of the video to find out who won that uh, rub from last week, the uh, happy ending rub. All right, so we'll see you next week, babies. Bye.